Hello, everybody. Welcome to what is a Sunday night, eight o'clock. Uh, as promised, I'm going on live and I'm going to do a quick demo and review discussion of the new Synergy uh, Amps product. Uh, this thing's a fantastic product. I uh, can't wait to share this with you guys. Hey, Brian. <laughs> hey, how was the game, man? Did uh, did your team win? I've been so busy all day, I wasn't able to, uh, you know, watch anything. I've been trying to get caught up around here. Let me give you a little taste of this beast. <laughs> Oh, cool. The Rams won. Sweet. <laughs> awesome, man. Um, yeah, it worked out good for me, too. Uh, I know you, you couldn't watch earlier in the day. Uh, so uh, I kind of waited, and I got, I got a lot of other things done today. So it worked out. I had a bunch of technical difficulties. I use OBS software when I go live, and it works every time except for when I'm about to go live, like a half hour before I check everything and the whole thing crashes on me and I got to restart it all. So it's always like that. I don't know why. Um, anyways, when the other camera here, what you're seeing is the Sin 2. And uh, they have a Sin 1 and a Sin 2. The Sin 1 obviously will store one mod in it and the Sin 2 will have two. Um, you know, and uh, there's, I, I got the Sin 1 at first and I, I like variety and I like no limits. So what I did is I ended up uh, going back and exchanging it for the Sin 2 and bought another module for it because now I have, uh, you know, if I want, I can have a dirty amp on one side and a clean amp on the other, two dirty amps, uh, whatever I want. Uh, hey, more, what's happening? <laughs> what's happening, Darren? How you doing, man? Um... So what's cool about this, like everybody knows I'm a big modeler uh, guy. I also love all the digital products like the Helix and the, the Kemper and, and stuff like that. And I think they're great products. One of the biggest reasons why I switched to that years ago was because, um, you know, years ago it, it, you didn't have options like this. I mean, you had to lug around a big amp head and a big cab or a combo amp and a bunch of pedals and a pedal board and all this kind of nonsense and I just got tired of it especially with what I do I have to when I do a lot of shows like with uh, touring bands like we'll, we'll open up for them or we'll just do shows with like local bands like ourselves and there's a lot of like you know uh, you know changeovers so you only got like 10 minutes to get your gear on the stage set up and ready to go and then when you're done you got 10 minutes to get it off the stage and they line check you and you go, you know, that's how it works. Uh, and it's frustrating when you got all that heavy gear. I mean, you're just throwing gear around like it, like nothing. And, you, and you're all sweaty and stressed by the time you start your show. And um, so I, you know, and then if you have any, you know, uh, problems, all the troubleshooting is fun because you got 80 billion cables going everywhere and it's just hard to figure stuff out. So I went digital mainly because of that. I just got tired of lugging all the stuff around. And you guys all know, too, like you get home at 3 a.m. and you got a car full of stuff and you're like, man, after this whole day of all this stuff, now I got to unload all this crap and throw it in my living room and go to bed. And the next morning you get up and you got to clean it all up and put it away. And it's just a nightmare. So I was so glad. So once again, that's why I switched from tubes uh, to going to digital platforms. But with this product... You don't have that issue. I mean, look at how small it is. This is literally just, it's like it fits in a rack. So, I mean, this is extremely small. So here's the, here's the benefits. Number one, you get 100% tubes. It's not, there's no fake anything with this. It's all tubes. It's all old school with a new twist because what you're getting is you're getting uh, the smaller size and you're not really sacrificing anything. So each module that you get, there's two modules in here. There's a diesel VH4, and on this side, there's the Friedman HBE. And so you get two channels on each one. And on the diesel, you get two EQs, you know, separate EQs for each channel. And then on the uh, Friedman, you get one. It shares one for both channels. 
you get two gain stages for each channel so you can set one up for rhythm or maybe like a basic almost clean sound and one is a lead sound you can uh also they have their independent volumes too so if you want that lead boost well you get more gain and more volume for your lead boost as well um and then it's got an effects loop on the back uh for mono or stereo and here's the other thing that's really cool uh if you have an amplifier that only has one channel, but you want to add more channels to it, well, guess what? You can hook this up to your amplifier, and whatever modules you put in here will be your other channels for your amp. I mean, isn't that freaking cool? So if you have an amp that's, you know, it's got an okay, you know, distortion channel, but it's kind of wimpy, we'll put a diesel or a, or a Friedman in here and hook that up through the amp's effects loop. And this has all the routing in the back for that. And then now you have extra channels for your amp. So, I mean, it's just, it's endless. The possibilities with this thing are just absolutely endless. So, um, well, let me run through the, the sounds real quick. Um, hey, what's up, Jamie Trevino? What's happening? Now, by the way, he came over yesterday and we, we hooked up the, um, uh, the HX stomp to it and had a lot of fun with it. Um... And turns out I need to got I need to buy another Helix because I sold my Helix because I got a Kemper, and now because I always use my Helix for my full blown tone, and now I got to buy a Helix again to use it for all the routing. This thing is amazing, but it doesn't have the same routing capabilities that the Helix has. So now I got to get a Helix to do all the routing for this, and now I'm going to have two mega rigs. I'm going to have my Kemper, and then I'm going to have my tube rig with the Helix acting as a routing tool. So it's going to be awesome. How does it sound with the Friedman? Uh, dude, it sounds amazing. Well, I got two Friedman ASC-12s upstairs. And, man, J Jamie, tell us how you think it sounds. Dude, it sounds amazing through those. I mean, it, it total amp in the room feel, tons of thump, tons of clarity, tons of uh, balls. I mean, it's just, it, and it projects the sound perfectly. And the cab sim in this really couldn't be better. I mean, they did a great job on the cab sim on this. I mean, this is the direct sound right here. I mean, that's just gnarly. And that's the HBE, uh, the lower gain setting on that. Um, I'll go through the other ones too for you. So that's the HBE, like the rhythm channel that I have set up. Now I'm going to switch it. I don't. I left the foot switch upstairs, um, so I meant to bring that down to show you to you. It's just a foot switch with five buttons on it um, to switch all the channels and mute everything. So let me go to the uh, lead channel and turn on some delay and stuff. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's so juicy. You know, the, the leads sound amazing. Hey, Luis, how you doing, man? Aaron Lucas, what's happening? How you doing, man? Okay, so reading the law here. I know the answer, but other people won't. Why the Helix floor as a controller over a standard MIDI switch? Oh, uh, that's a great question. Okay. So the reason why I'm going to go with the Helix Floor for the controller for this over a standard MIDI switch is, number one, I want to use, like, dirty channels on here because that's why I bought this. I want the distortion to be pure tubes, okay? And it, sound, and it sounds incredible, so why not? 
number one. Number two, if I want to use a clean channel, like a nice clean block, well, the Helix does that very well. I mean, I dialed in some killer clean channels on that, and using the Placator or the, uh, I think it was the, um, uh, it leaves me right now. Uh, I don't know. There's two amps on there I used that had killer clean channels on them. Um, and uh, so that's what I'm going to use it for is clean channels, switching, and uh, I, use, I have a piezo on this. So when I use a piezo, all I use is, um, oh, oh, the arc type. Yeah, the arc type, which is, which is the PRS Archon. I use that for cleans as well, and they're beautiful, so why not, you know? Um, and all the effects associated with them, it'll all be in there. Um, and I use a piezo, and with that, I only use like a compressor or two with some delay, reverb, and some chorus, and that's all I need. I don't need amp blocks or anything, but if I run a piezo through this, it's going to sound horrible. So the Helix, with its huge amount of uh, capacity to do switching, routing, and all that kind of stuff, uh, I can use it for that, and it'll, it'll take care of it. So this will just be like a pass-through through the Helix. So everything comes out of the Helix, but this is still the tone for all my dirty channels. Uh, so lead, rhythm will all be coming out of here through the Helix, uh, through an effects block, um, and then uh, or effects loop, you know, and then the rest of it, the piezo and cleans, will be the Helix providing me with that tone via compressors and, you know, uh, various effects for the piezo and a clean channel with some effects, uh, you know, for the right clean stuff. So... That's what I'm going to use it for. See, when I had the Helix before, I used it for everything, all my tone. I used amp blocks. I used all that. And it sounded good. It sounded really good. Um, but I never used it for a switching module, you know. So I didn't realize the power that thing had and the capability that it had because I never utilized it that way. So after I got this and found out what I needed to do, I was immediately like, sold on i gotta buy a helix again because the routing capabilities are incredible there's there's really nothing you can't do so a lot of the helix that you helixes that you see on stages there's probably a mix between ones that you use for tone uh and ones that you use for switching and ones that you use 50 50 you know for both so i'm going to be the 50 50 guy you know by the way cheers everybody having a glass of whiskey there was like a Major incident a couple doors down for me today. A bunch of cops and ambulances and stuff. So it's been a little weird around here. And uh, I got my uh, home production device in case something happens again. I'm in my basement. I brought this down with me just in case. So so anything uh, gets squirrely, I'm, I'm ready. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. It was a crazy situation. Okay, so... Here is, uh, so I'm going to go back to the, the old no effects, and now I'm going to go to the HBE. This is the HBE, diesel HBE rhythm channel. <laughs> I mean, that's just nasty. It's just so, just gnarly. It's just, it kind of reminds me of Tool mixed with maybe some other kind of tones out there. It's just really, really crunchy and thick. And I don't know if you noticed, but this is the precision drive. So I push it with that. When I bought this, I, I was at the store and I took it with me. I hooked up, I think it was a seven or eight overdrive pedals. Like, um, you know, that, that new... Uh, what was it the new, uh, you know, tube screamer with the the actual tube in it? I tried that. I tried a um, exotic BB pedal, which I thought was really good. That was a top runner. So was the tube pedal. But at the end, after I whittled it down to the top three, I used the uh, Horizon Devices Precision Drive as as the dark horse to see if it would beat those out, and it did. I mean, it tightened the amp up so well, but still kept the transparency there and pushed it just enough for me and with that tight knob 
that you have right here, I mean, it really makes a huge difference. You can have it as tight or as loose or in between as you want, and it's just amazing. It's an amazing pedal. So anybody with a tube amp or even a, a modeler, except for a Kemper, it sucks with the Kemper. It sucks the tone right out of it for some reason. But with any other modeler and any other tube amp, that's the go-to pedal. It's really amazing. Let me go to the, uh, the, the highest gain channel on the VH4. And I'll demo that for you, and then I'll, I'll read some of your, your um, comments, and then uh, we'll have a discussion, and I'm your monkey boy. So, like, whatever you want me to do, I'll do it. I'll even pull one of these out and show it to you, too. So hang on one second. <laughs> It's just so fat it's so juicy and i'm not even in stereo it's just one i mean you can run this in stereo too that's a nice thing too with the with the sin 2 you can run it in stereo but i only have one output going right now because i don't have room on my board for two and it still sounds ridiculous and here's the thing i'm using in-ears right now the kz as 10s and what the other thing i really like about this is since i can go direct out I don't have to worry about like it sounding all airy and weird in my in-ears. It's direct. So it sounds incredible in here. I mean, it sounds absolutely studio in here. It's just amazing. There's no annoying frequencies. There's nothing bugging me. I don't have to worry about wrong mic placement when I go out and perform. It's going to be very consistent because no mics. It just goes straight out into the board. And uh, I use the in-ears, and it sounds incredible every time. So let me read some of the comments here. Yeah, the Archon, Aaron, thank you. Uh, that is a killer clean amp. Um, can you hook this up to, to the Kemper? Yeah, I'm pretty sure you can. I haven't done it yet, but it does have, uh, like, actual ins and outs, like, you know, full-blown ins and outs on the back, and it also has uh, a, a stereo effects loop on it. So I'm pretty sure you can run it through the Kemper with the X. You know, the button up there is labeled X. I think that's that would be your, your go-through kind of uh, deal. So, yeah, I'm almost positive you can. Glad you're okay, Aaron says. Thank you. Yeah, it was crazy. I walked upstairs because I was getting everything ready. I walked upstairs and looked out the window, and there was, like, seven cop cars, an ambulance, a fire truck, and there's, like, probably, I don't know, 15 cops standing in my front yard. And I'm like, what the <laughs> – what? What the hell is going on here, you know? I didn't think I was that loud, you know. Um, do you think the Sin 2 is worth the extra money, Brian asked? Yes. Yes, I do. And here's why. Because um, if, if you want to go out and perform with this and you want, like, a, you know, a dirty amp, let's say you want to go out with the, uh, the diesel VH4. So you got two channels in that. So you have your rhythm, crunch, and then your lead. And then, like I said, the separate EQs and the separate uh, gain stages and volumes for that. But you also need a clean channel. Well, they make a Morgan, which is based on the Vox AC30, and you can get the cleans through that. So now you have a full-blown rig with four channels on it, which will do pretty much anything you want. And the Vox AC30 model is incredible. Um, now, here's the other thing to take note of. This is genuine diesel you know, this is a genuine diesel preamp. This is a genuine Friedman preamp. So these are not knockoffs, and they're like, well, we got it close, and it kind of sounds like it. So, no, Dave Friedman made this. This is his parts made by his people, and it's just made to the specifications for Synergy so that they can slide it, the chassis in here, and it'll fit. Same thing, you know. Uh, I think his name's Peter Diesel, right? I mean, it's this is his stuff, uh, you know. So you pull this out. There's actual tubes in there, and they're glowing. They're hot. I mean, I learned that the hard way. I pulled it out and picked it up one day, and it freaking burnt my hand. I mean, it's legit, you know. I mean, it's 100% legit. And it, to me, it's, it's, it's a miracle product. It's a dream come true because, like I said, after I sold my old rig, I swore I would never buy another tube amp 
because I just got tired of lugging all that crap around. And yes, I love tone and I love all that stuff. But after a while, man, you're throwing your crap on stage and you got to get it all hooked up. I'm in a prog band, so I don't have a simple setup. I use piezo. I use like, you know, a lot of cleans and dirties, a lot of, a lot of different effects and things to do that I got to do. And so I don't just throw an amp on the stage and throw a mic in front of it with a delay pedal and an overdrive. That's not me. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I'm just telling you where I'm coming from. I can't operate like that. So I had to get rid of all that stuff and go and simplify my rig, but still have all the goodies so I could do what I could do. Um, shoot your HX stomp quick, the law says. Um, okay, so here's... Here's a delay and some, uh, I think I got the reverb on here. Yeah. So that's that uh, snapshot. I use the three snaps. And then on this one, I have like a gray, I think it's a gray face. Which sounds incredible. And then here's the uh, dry. So this is the dry one. Uh, so Brian, I think you asked a question. More Jared's got a gun. Whole world's coming. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. If somebody comes down here and decides to get crazy, I'll undo that son of a bitch quick. <laughs> um, so if Brian says, I'm only playing at home. Do you think the Sin 1 is good enough, or should I go with the Sin 2? Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I think the Sin 1 would be fine. Um, but if you want, uh, like, a dirty and a clean... You could probably get it with the Sin 1 with certain amps. I'm trying to think off the top of my head which ones have that. Probably the Vox, but, you know, the Vox is, I mean, depending on the genre of music you play. So if you're not a metal guy, the Vox would work probably really well for you. You just slap it with an overdrive and, you know, uh, and then ch choose the other channel with a lower gain stage, and you can have a clean channel. But uh, it, it depends. Like, if you want stereo and you want four channels and two really awesome amps, I would suggest going with the Sin 2. Um, if you're just, like you said, if you're just kind of like a simple setup at home, you're just jamming, playing some leads, playing some, like, cool bluesy or even metal riffs, uh, you know, you don't need a lot of stuff, then go with the Sin 1. But the nice thing is, again, like with the Sin 2, you always have room to upgrade. You always have room to, to grow. And you know what's going to happen. This is me. I'm kind of a down-the-road thinker. Is that like when new when new uh, modules come out? Like the um, I know uh, Engel Savage is coming out very soon. So when that comes out, I'm gonna want to put that in here too and couple it with whatever amp that's appropriate with it. And I'm you know it's like why not? You know I mean if you think about it, like when can you bring this much gear, you know, or this many amps to a show and actually have it this portable and this easy to use? And it's legit. So there's no way anybody can look at you and go, oh, you got one of those. No, it's this is your amp, dude. Well, and here's the other thing. Okay, so this is this is another thing. These mods or these modules are all $399. You know, so they're $399. So for $399 bucks, I can buy a you know a diesel, a, a literal full-blown diesel, and I don't have to pay forty five hundred dollars for that. Now, that's kick-ass, you know. Yes, it doesn't have every channel, and yes, it's not the big blocky, you know, amp and all that. But I get the tone that I want. I get the tone of the diesel. This is a freaking diesel. So I'm just not getting the power section of it. Um, and, and I don't have to spend that much money. So if I want to try a diesel, I want to try a Friedman, I want to try a, uh, I think they got the Bogner Fish, um, you know, I want to try all these amps, like the, like I like said, with the Ingle Savage. I don't have to pay the Ingle Savage price or the Bogner Fish price. You can't even get a Bogner Fish anymore, but you know what I'm saying. I don't have to buy the whole amp. I can just buy the part of it that I want, which is this part, the tone, you know, and the tubes and, and all the, the stuff. So 
and I don't have to pay all that, that premium price, which to me uh, is is great. So now I can try all this stuff out, out without breaking the bank, you know. So uh, I, I think it's a great option. I really do. I mean, uh, I'm a huge fan of this. I'm such a huge fan that I'm actually buying a Helix to pair with it so I can control it. I mean, otherwise, I would just keep it for home use and go, oh, this is fun to play with at home, but I fell in love with this immediately. I was at the store with Jamie Trevino. We were just there hanging out, and the guys at the counter were like, hey, go try this out. We got them. We just got them in, and I'm like, all right, you know. I grabbed a guitar off the wall and plugged it in. I didn't really expect much. I was kind of like, yeah, this is going to be, it, it'll be interesting at least. The first chug, the first. And, I, and they had it hooked up to a Friedman uh, ASC-12, which is my go-to anyways. I was just like, holy freaking crap, man. I mean, I, I just couldn't believe it. And that was without an overdrive hook to it. I, I think I was going through the Friedman BE. I was like, throw me an overdrive pedal. And we hooked it. I was just blown away. Could not believe it, how good it sounded. So I bought one that day. I walked out. I, I could not walk out the door without one, you know. Um, let me read some comments here. Oh, so you play metal, Brian. So, yeah. I, you know, I mean, I'll be honest with you. I mean, I don't work for Synergy. You know, I don't I own stock in the company, so it's not like I'm going to make any money off of whatever you buy, but I'm kind of a all or nothing person. So just couple that and use salt with, you know, with what I'm saying here. But man, I'll tell you, I mean, imagine this, you got your sin two and you have an angle savage on one side and a, and a, a diesel VH four on the other. <laughs> How cool is that? And you don't have to pull them out to swap them, which is still easy to do but uh you just tap a switch and you go to that one and you know and you can just do whatever you want you know with just a push of a foot switch button and and you're off to the races uh just so you know too the foot switch comes with the sin one you get two switches and the sin two it's a it's a uh it's a uh, a separate purchase it's 125 bucks and it's five switches on there you know, four channels and one mute, and it's hooked up via MIDI, just so you know. So you have to buy the foot switch for it unless you have another MIDI controller, which I'm buying the Helix, so that's what I'm going to use. Any amps like the Dr. Z, Aaron says? Uh, okay, so you're asking about what about the guys that need the twang? Um, probably the Vox would be your your go-to i'm going to go on their site right now for you and uh it's got it's got a list of all the amps that they have available right now here's the other thing i was going to cover too um let me get to their site okay so it's loading right now while that's loading um they actually have like uh, uh, a bunch of other amps right now that are available that uh, have been modded. So um, and they're they're backwards compatible. So they actually will fit in here and hook in here no problem. So um, I think there's a Mesa. There's a I think Petrucci's Mark II C Plus is available for this, um, and it's like an OEM thing, but they're they're legit. You know, they're all legit uh, amps, and you could put them in here. And so you can have a lot of stuff that um, even that uh, isn't on Synergy's website. Um, uh, good question. Uh, do you have to? So Brian, Brian's asking, uh, if you buy the Syn, Syn 2, do you have to have both amps in there for it to work? Well, let's find out. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and... I'm going to turn this off, and I'm going to take one of these out. I'm pretty sure it'll work. So I'm going to take the diesel out, okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and fire it back up, and let's see how it works when uh, with the uh, Friedman. It's going to be interesting pulling it out with one hand. Pardon me. Let this 
guitar and kind of awkward angle here. Okay, so that's out. All right, so let's see what we got here. Okay, so the Freedman's working. So that answers that. So this is this is uh, what it is. You know, it's just a little, you know, module. And in there are the tubes. They're right under here. I don't want to touch it and burn myself live. <laughs> I did that the other day, and I was like, thing is hot. But yeah, all the circuitry, everything in there is all legit. It's all diesel stuff. So um, you can see everything, you know, all the circuits, the tubes, everything. And yeah, there's even a bias. Uh, I don't know if you could see that. See this guy right here? You can actually bias the tubes with this. Change the biasing on it. So if you want it to be tighter, looser, more aggressive, whatever, you just switch it accordingly. And it does, it does actually make, um, a, it's a subtle difference, but you can tell it's there. And then the sag control is right here. So you actually have a sag control on it right here uh, for everything. So let me turn this back off and slide this guy back in. But yeah, that's, you know, that's really it. So when you get these, like I said, they're $3.99 and you can get, you know, you can look on their website and see what they have. Uh, um, let's see here. So we're going to hit shop. Um, modules. Okay, so you get the diesel VH4, the Soldano slow, and the Plexi, the 800 preamp, which I think is like an, uh, it's like one of their, uh, um, versions of the uh, the Marshall, um, the Morgan, which is the Vox AC30, uh, Friedman HBE, which is what I have, the Harry Brown Eye, uh, Friedman DS, uh, Friedman BE preamp, Metropolis, uh, the B Man, which I think is the the Fender Bassman, um, TLDX. I'm not familiar with some of these abbreviations, so I'm sorry. I just know metal amps mainly. Um, that might be a tweed. Uh, I remember hearing somewhere that there was a tweed. But there's other companies that, like I said, there's, there's, um, there's a bunch of other ones that are available too that you can get. So if you really want to start out small and work your way up, you know, and, and like just get into it, I mean, you're looking at, I think it's like $4.99 for the chassis and then $3.99 for a module, you know, and um, you can get started on whatever you want. And like I said, it's legit. It fits in a rack. Um, if you have an amplifier right now, like I said earlier, that um, is lacking some stuff, like lacking some options for you, um, some channels, like let's say you have a single rec, you know, uh, Mesa. Well, get one of these, and now you have a triple rec, you know, essentially, because now you have two other channels that you can hook up to it and it's seamless you plug it in hook in the appropriate cables and you're done and that's that you know and it'll sit right on top of it or in a rack or whatever you want and and you got more channels now so it's very easy to hook up it's seamless um and it makes a ton of sense so it's not just for guys that don't have amps it's for guys that have amps and don't have amps so All right, yeah, I'm not sure if they have a Dr. Z, but I, I can, you might want to check, uh, I, you know, I should have had this uh, ready. I wasn't expecting that question, which is a great question. Um, but uh, I put in the forums, uh, I asked if there's other models available that just, that aren't on um, Synergy's website. And a guy put down two other places where you can buy these modules and, not only can you buy them there, um, but they're hot rotted. They actually have, uh, they're modded. So they actually add knobs and switches to them <clears throat> and customize them. And they're 50 bucks more, so they're 449 But you have a modded 
uh, version of those modules. So they'll add knobs and switches to it that uh, maybe uh, weren't available before, but now you have that and they're kind of hot rotted. So that's also really cool. You know, it's a great option for you. Um, so Luis says, what happened to the Line 6 power cab? Did you try it? No, um, I haven't tried one yet. A friend of mine, Dave Rebell, um, is coming here soon. And uh, he's bringing his, and we're going to go ahead and do a review of that and try it out. I haven't, I've only played one once, and that was at um, Gear Fest at Sweetwater. And it was in one of those big open tents with cement floor, and, you know, there's a bunch of people and noise everywhere. I'm, I couldn't really get in a good read on what it sounded like or anything because it was just so noisy in there um so i can't really even give you my opinion uh in all fairness on it but um i mean i've heard good things about them you know but it i mean i'm so spoiled with the freedmans um it would have to be a pretty darn good product uh for me to compare it to a freedman and say that i like it and i'm not saying i don't like it i have no idea but i'm just saying it's got its work cut out for it because uh, those Friedmans are, in my opinion, for the music that I play, are the best, you know. Uh, so, yeah, I'm looking forward to it, though. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I think I turned this off. Make sure it's off here. Let me slide this guy back in. So you got to see what they look like, you know. Very small. And they go in just like that. Very easy. And then you just kind of thumb screw them in here just to kind of keep them in, keep them from sliding out. Turn it back on and back in business. So it's a really simple, I'm sure it's a very complex design or complex thing that they got going on there, but we'll never know because it's very simple for us to operate. Everything's very easy to get to, very easy to switch out, very easy to hook up, very easy to carry. They're light, very portable unit. I mean, you can literally fit this and a Helix or, or if you don't use a Helix and just the, you want to use the pedal board because you're just, you know, pretty simple with your setup. Fit this, the HX stomp, and your pedal, your little switcher in the front seat of your car and go to a gig and you're done. You know, I mean, that's really how simple it is. Uh, and like I said, the, the, the precision drive pairs with it very well. In fact, I'll show you right now. So here's the HBE. Go ahead and turn off the, uh, so the, this is just the HBE with no precision drive in front of it. That's still really tight and has, uh, yeah, I mean, it's great, you know. Um, but uh, here's with it on. So it's a lot tighter, and it has that nice kind of like attack, pick attack to it when you turn it on. So depending on the genre of music, you may or may not use the overdrive, but uh, it is it is nice to have, you know, um, for me anyways, because I, I utilize it uh, for everything that I do. So, yeah, it's it's killer. <laughs> okay so brian you're asking does it just use an xlr cable to hook up to the freedman uh yes just an xlr cable and you're done because um, this isn't powered now here's the thing you could buy the sin 5050 which is the power amp for this um in stereo so you can have uh 50 watts per channel baby cakes for all you guys that are in my age group you can have 50 watts per channel and go out to cabs you know just regular passive cabs or and that's tube powered as well so you got all tube you know from the gain stage and the preamp all the way out to the actual power amp part um 
so you can run it to your existing cab if you have a cab that you love a four by twelve or a two by twelve or whatever. Um, so they do have that option where you can buy um, the the Sin fifty fifty, and they even have I think for the for the single uh, unit the 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 Sin one. There's a cab for, uh, a powered you know amp for that too, so you could do that if you want. But I already have two Friedman ASC 12s, and they got 500 watts each in them, and I don't really need a power cab or you know a powered uh, power amp. So I just hook it up straight to those, and I'm good. And when I play live, I use in ears, so I don't need a cab. I mean, my stage volume is like zero. This is my stage volume. That's as loud as they get. All you're gonna hear is the clack of the strings, because <laughs> I don't use an amp, you know. So even with this, I won't. You know, it's all direct. Um, and if you do use a cab and a power amp, you bypass the amp or the uh, the the what do you call it? The cab sim on here, and it's direct out, and then your cab takes over for that. And if you want to hook this into a DAW and use other like uh, IRs. Well, you could do that with this. You just use a different direct out, and it'll bypass the uh, the cab sim, and then you can put whatever IR you want in front of it, and then now you got any IR that you want, like an own hammer or live ready sound or whatever. You can use those if those are more to your taste. But I love the cab sim in this, so there's really no reason for me to do that. And I don't really want to get involved in all of that... Uh, um, what do they call that uh, when you get, oh, uh, option paralysis. <laughs> I got so tired of that with different products. And I just, I love this and it sounds amazing. So I don't really want to get into all that paralysis stuff anymore. Okay, so Luis uh, asked if it uh, has a power amp or is it just a preamp? Um yeah, not, uh, I'll just give you a quick answer because I think you and Brian are kind of on the same page with that. But, um, yeah, this particular one does not. There's no power. Um, but you can still get the SIN 5050 and get a power amp for it. And it's all tube, and you can hook it up to any you know any cab that you want and have power. So that's what's great about this, too, is they actually gave you options. So you don't have to have power if you don't want it. You know, I already bought my power. I got two Freedmen, so I don't really need all that. Um, and then, like I said, you got effects loop, you can run stereo with this. So that's the other thing too. I mean, the options for me were, were obvious because I like, I like having more. I like, uh, having stereo cause I'm hooked on that now, especially with the in-ears, you got the ping pong, you got flangers and phasers washing through your head while you're playing. And it sounds amazing. I'm just hooked on that now. So I never want to play mono anymore. I want stereo sound. Um, and it sounds bigger. It just does, you know, especially, when you're playing solos and you got the ping pong delay, it just swirls around the room. You can feel it. You can hear it, you know, like birds flying around. It's just, it's crazy, you know, how it just swirls around and, and has, adds all this space and size to your sound. So I like that and I'm kind of hooked on it. Um, so I got it for that. Plus I want the option of having two amps at once, whether it's a clean channel on one side and dirty on the other, or, two dirty amps that just sound incredible and I want one for my rhythm, one for my lead or on this song I want to change my tone a little bit and do the Alex Lifeson thing. You know, that's what he's famous for is he has the Hughes and Kettner amps which everybody knows has different tones in it and like he'll pick the appropriate tone for the song and even if you listen to Rush's albums, I mean he's famous for having a different tone on each song that fit the song better. I mean, listen to moving pictures. Every song, there's a different guitar tone on it. Um, so that's what I like to do. I like to have the appropriate tone for the appropriate song, especially being in a prog band. It's like a roller coaster. We're constantly writing stuff that's either angry or dark or scary or heavy or happy or, you know, there's all these different emotions that we're doing. And I need a tone that projects that and supports that. So I have the option to do that, and I, you know, with the two amps in here and the four channels, I can do that, and it gives me a lot of options, and it's just fun. You know, let's face it; sometimes you're doing a lot of shows, and you, it just gets a little mundane after a while, and you want to do something to break up the mo monotony. Put in another module and just say, "I'm running the angle tonight," you know, just for a different flavor for you to enjoy yourself more, and uh, it just keeps it keeps it fresh, you know. Um, 
So, Luis, uh, what do you think works better for metal, Gemini 2 or the Freedman? I need to buy an FRFR, but I'm worried about the high gain amps. I saw your video about FRFR, but I just want to know your opinion. Well, I appreciate your question, and thanks for watching the video. I appreciate that. Definitely stick with uh, a wood enclosure because, you know, you saw in the video, I mean, the plastic ones always fall short. And, look, I, I, I think the world of the guys at Mission Engineering, I really do. Paul is a very nice person. He's a great guy, big-hearted guy. Uh, love him to pieces. Um, and I think they make really good stuff. Like, I, I use their Mission pedals. Uh, I think they make the best pedals on the planet. Uh, they're awesome pedals for the expression pedals and, and volume pedals and stuff like that. They're beautiful, and they work well. And they're high quality. The Mission Cab, I thought, was really good. It was loaded with options and ins and outs. And you got that uh, knob on the back that um, changes the color of it a little bit for each room. And I think that that's really cool. But for me, the Freedman's one because what I look for, uh, and this is a personal opinion, okay, um, what I look for in uh, my tone for what I do, prog metal, um, I want something that's going to break my freaking shins. You know, I want when I'm standing in front of it and it's down here shooting all that sonic goodness at my legs, I feel like I'm going to get shin splints if I stand there too long. You know, and that's what I found with the Freemans. They're so punchy. They have so much thump to them and so much balls. And they're extremely transparent. And for that, I just, I just had to go with them because I had them both here. I didn't do a shootout with them. I kind of wish I would have, but I didn't. Um, but I will say this, though. Uh, the cleans in the uh, Gemini 2 had a nice sparkle to them. So if, if, you, if you have a lot of cleans, uh, they do have a really nice sparkle to them. The Friedman does too, but there's just a little extra sparkle on them with the, uh, the Gemini. And I really like that. Um, it was kind of lush and sparkly. They're pretty close with that, but I'd have to give it to the Gemini on the cleans. But when it comes to really heavy, like riffy stuff with um, heavy guitar, I mean, in my humble opinion, the Freedman's um, just for me were the flavor that I liked. Doesn't mean they're better. Doesn't mean, you know, whatever. It's just that's what I like. So I hope that helps you. Um, yeah, Freeman kicks ass, Brian says. I mean, it really does. I mean, the only thing, in my opinion, that's better than a Freedman is the second one. <laughs> I got two in my living room, and I'm not kidding you. It's like it, <laughs> there's times I'm in there, and it's like if I'm to die, <laughs> this is how I want to go out with those things just pounding my house to pieces while I'm playing, and it's like a, a glorious death. I mean, they're just incredible sounding. So, it's like I tell everybody, shin-shattering goodness. You know, that's what you get with the Freedmans. The Law. I love Paul and have an endorsement with uh, Morley, but uh, I also love using the Mission stuff. I usually buy them and mod them. You can't go wrong with either. Yeah, I mean, like I said, Paul has a heart of gold. That guy, you know, he runs uh, Mission Engineering. He's a fantastic person. I love that guy to pieces. Um so, you know, it really breaks my heart to say that I personally prefer the Freemans over him because I love Paul, you know. But, you know, my ears don't have hearts. They just have eardrums. And that's just, <laughs> that's just what, the way it is for me. And like I said, I'm not saying the Freemans are a better product. It's just for my taste. It's just, you know, they're both made extremely well. Um, so, yeah, you're welcome, Luis. I mean, uh if you really want my advice, take your um, your unit, like if you're using a Helix or Kemper or whatever it is that you're running through, take it to a store if it has both and, and shoot them out. And just do a shootout with them and take your time and just be honest with yourself. And, um, you know, and you that way you know you're going to walk out with a proper product. Because, I mean, I've even, uh, before I trained my ears really well with modelers and FRFRs, I even heard, like, sometimes some of the plastic cabs, like the Yamahas and some of the other ones. And when you don't have anything to compare them to, it's like, well, this actually could work, you know. But if you have an immediate comparison to a, a cab that has, you know, a wood enclosure, I mean, 
instantly you're like, oh, never mind. It's that different. You know, it really is that much better. Um, so, yeah, if you're able to do a shootout for yourself, do it. You know, seriously, it's it's worth it. But um, anyways, I'm going to do a couple. Like, here's the HBE once again. I know you guys want to hear some more stuff. Let me know what you want to hear. <laughs> That's the test right there for me. I got to hear the picks scraping across the strings. By the way, I'm using um, tonight V picks. This this is a killer pick. This is called the Screamer, and it's super like aggressive and loud sounding. I love it. <laughs> So what I'm looking for is just the string separation. I'm out of tune a little. And it records well too. You know, that's something like if you have a DAW and you want to, re you know, you really want to check out a tone so you're not distracted by playing, just record it real quick. Record five minutes of you or even a minute of you noodling around. And then you can sit back as a listener and check it out, and you can just really pay attention to what it's doing, and you can hear the richness in some of the notes, you know, like... I mean, it's just so rich. It's You can hear, you could feel the pick digging into the strings, and there's just so much attack and just chunkiness there. Um, throw on some delay. I mean, it's just so rich, you know, and that's, that's what I really like about it. So once again, if you're looking for something portable, you're tired of carrying, um, you know, uh, uh, heavy tube amps around with you and you're considering going with a modeler, nothing wrong with modelers. I've been using them for years. I have a Kemper. I've had a Helix. I've had uh, the HX, uh, what was that thing called, the HD500X or something. I've had one of those. I've had a lot of stuff over the years and loved all of them, especially for the convenience. And um, But let's just say you're a tube purist and i know a lot of my friends are like that they're like i just got to stick with tubes man there's a difference i love tubes and i just want to stick with them and i totally respect that and totally understand that but here's the thing this is a no compromise situation here this is a hundred percent genuine diesel this is a hundred percent genuine friedman you know dave friedman like made this this is it's got his stamp of approval on it same thing with Peter Diesel. This is his stuff, you know, um, and it and there's no compromise. It's the tone. It's the legit tone of the amp, the legit components and uh, circuits and everything else of the amp, and it's portable. Like I said, look at that. That is super freaking portable, and the Sin 1 is half the size, so the Sin 1 is literally the size of one of these. Like right there is your halfway mark. So... I mean, now you don't have to carry all this heavy stuff around so that you can still be a tube lover. Um, now you can still be that guy and not compromise anything by getting one of these. This is probably... All right, I've reviewed a lot of products. This is my favorite product I've ever reviewed, honestly, because it's everything. It's got everything that you want with no compromise. It's portable. It's easy to set up. It's very affordable because, like I said... I mean, literally, like right here, there's $5,000 worth of tone sitting here. I mean, no, there's more than that. There's probably eight or $9,000 worth of tone sitting here because, I mean, a Friedman BE, uh, HBE is like, what is it, like three grand, almost four grand? I know the diesels are $4,500. Once again, yeah, it doesn't have every channel, but it has the sound of them and the feel and, and the legit parts and tubes and everything else. So it's got the parts I want, which are, I want the tone. I want the tubes and the circuits and all that stuff and all that goodness that they make. And it's all legit. It's 100% legit. Um, but I didn't have to pay all this money. And there's a guy that did a, uh, a thing about, like, you know, some of the modelers are stealing 
the souls out of these amps and and it's not good for amp makers and if that's and i understand that because we're as musicians i mean everybody steals our music right they just spin it for free and we get a, a penny you know off of that or not even a penny but see now you can still uh save money and support the amp makers by buying something like this but because you're still keeping them in business by buying their their products you're supporting their business staying with tubes and uh i mean there's really nothing wrong with this and you're saving a ton of money because you're buying the affordable version of the amps without compromising the sound or the quality the quality and the sound is all there 100 percent. there's no difference none it's not a model it's not a digital version of it it's an actual version of it this is their stuff i mean i don't know how many times or ways i can say it but it's just it's just such a badass concept so favorite product of the year right here Hands down, no question. Favorite freaking product of the year for me. And I've reviewed a lot of stuff this year. And I still have more to do. But I, I can already give this one the golden ticket. You know, it's done. Okay, so... Uh, Luis, instead of buy a Helix, you should try an X8. You know... um. A friend of mine has an X8, and I mean this with all due respect and, and everything, but the Helix for me was a billion times easier to operate. I don't like to do the computer deep dives into products. I want to just have the product in front of me, turn the knobs, and have it do its thing, and I'm done. I don't have to hook it up to software to do that. And the Helix is like the most no-brainer product out there um, as far as that goes. And once again, I'm just using it for effects and routing now, not sound, unless it's for the piezo or the clean channel. Other than that, this is my sound. So I'm just going to use it for the routing capabilities. And the Helix, and as far as I've heard, seen, and everything else, experienced, um, Helix is the absolute, hands-down, best product regarding that. Because uh, it's easier to use. And the routing is pretty much endless. There's nothing it can't do. So that's why I'm going with that. Um, but I do appreciate the, uh, the um, you know, you putting your opinion out there. Because, I mean, that's what this is about. This is about, you know, us having a discussion. And um, I'm not saying I don't agree with you. I'm just saying that um, what I've seen with the Axe is that there, there is a little more digging you got to do to get to certain things. And it's not as easy to operate. Um, and this way you have a little bit of all worlds. I have the Axe 8 work beautiful controlling the amp via MIDI, and you will have excellent quality effects and amps. Yeah, I mean, I the the effects of the Axe effects are amazing. That's that's definitely um, something that I think is pretty much like a given. Everybody knows like they're undeniably very good. You know. Okay, the losses. Remember two years ago when you called me an idiot for using amps? <laughs> I did not <laughs> call you an idiot. <laughs> um, well, now here's the thing. Uh, I, and once again, we're, me and Jamie are friends, so we rag on each other. Um, I would never call you an idiot for using an amp, but it didn't make sense, like I said, for me to drag a heavy, big old amp and cab around with me for what I do. Like Jamie plays shows where they have roadies and they set up. He's in uh, Rockstar, which is a band. They, they do a, it's like an 80s tribute band. They do a fantastic job. If you ever want to have a really fun night out and just forget about all your problems and go home with a guaranteed smile on your face, go see Rockstar. They are the most fun band you will ever see in your life. And I don't care what kind of bad mood you're in. Within two songs, they got you hooked, and you, and they and you belong to them at, for the rest of the night. They got you, and it's the most fun you'll ever have at a show. It's high quality, high energy stuff, and these guys are legit as hell. I mean, they do a great job. So you know how you see some of your your buddies' tribute bands, and it's like, oh, that's cute. They did a Motley Crue song, and it sounded okay. These guys literally do it as good, if not better, than the band. <laughs> I mean, it's really good. So when they go out and perform, they got people like taking care of their stuff for them. So he, yeah, he still lugs around heavy gear and stuff, but he's got help with it. With me, with what I do, because I'm a local, like, uh, you know, original band. Well, we got to lug our own crap. 
and we only get we don't show up five hours before and set up our stage and have sound checks and have it all perfect we're waiting for the band ahead of us to get off the stage and we're ready to throw our crap up on while they're getting their stuff off and we literally have 10 minutes so for me it didn't make sense to have all that gear because i there's no way i could make that happen you know i would be so stressed out by the time we started playing i wouldn't able be able to remember my what i'm supposed to do it's a mess Okay, Aaron, uh, could be worse. One guy was on an episode that never aired. <laughs> I've had two that it didn't air. But, you know, our episode, I mean, I could probably still go back and edit that and put it out someday. I mean, maybe I can. Uh, you came on and uh, we, you ended up buying a Helix afterwards because you loved how it sounded and, and everything. Um, I think it was a couple weeks later you bought one and... And it, it does. It records well. It does great. My thing with the Helix is with high-gain tones, I just found it lacked a little bit. Excuse me. It wasn't bad. It just it didn't have the magic that I was looking for. And I used it for a long time. And um, it, it, was, um, it was decent. And it was really good at the cleans and the piezo stuff. But when I, whenever I went to my high-gain stuff, there was just... It was like two-dimensional instead of three-dimensional. This is thir three-dimensional. There's just so much aggression and nastiness there, and it just didn't have all of that. And um, it didn't sound bad, but it was just for me, it was just missing that one extra dimension. And after playing through a Kemper, which is definitely a step up as far as I'm concerned with high-gain tones, and then this, I mean, it's just you're so convinced when you play through these. Um so that's why I made the switch. Um, but I still think the Helix is a great product and the routing capabilities and the ease of use and the IO is like unmatched out there. It's the best with that. Um, uh, the law, Jamie, thanks for the shout out for my band too, dude. As for setup, you have made total metamorphosis yeah i kind of came full circle but what's nice is and you're welcome for the shout out because you guys really are freaking fantastic um but i came full circle but here's the thing like i had like an old school rig i went to the modeling world for a while and then i came back to back to an old school technology or old school sound but with new technology and that's what we're looking at here and that's why i love technology so much because you can take uh something that that people fell in love with years ago the tube sound and i just can't beat it it's so warm and chewy and and it's so aggressive and all this kind of stuff and you know but i hate lugging it well you don't have to lug it around anymore this will fit in an overhead this is a fly rig i mean you're looking at a fly rig right now and it's tubes when 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 was the last time you heard that a tube rig was a fly rig never because they're not but now they are because this will fit in an overhead along with the HX stomp and then an overdrive pedal. And for most guys, you're done. That's it. But see, even for me, this with a Helix and, and the, uh, the Precision Drive, it's still a fly rig. And it's a tube fly rig. So here you go. Here's your tube fly rig right here. So if you're a traveling musician um, and you love tube amps, but you, you're just tired of hang, you know, uh, lugging them around and then like you use like the the back line that they promise you like you know, like Jamie you're going to Punaconda pretty soon and you know how it goes you get there and you just hope that they got like a good back line rig for you and you know how the back line stuff is you know well it's whatever they have at the store and it's been kicked around and treated like crap and I hope this works and that works and the tubes might not be biased properly I mean there's so many reasons why um, you know people just complain about that situation well now and then they started bringing modelers with them because they got tired of dealing with it because at least they knew what they had and i totally get that and support that and respect it but now you can bring your tube amp with you as a fly rig and you don't need backline anymore you're not making any compromises you have a tube rig that fits in an overhead compartment and you're good this is your tone, and you've compromised nothing. So, really, what do you got to lose? And now here's the other thing. So that's a good person that this is for. Another good person is for is a studio engineer. 
If you're a studio engineer, put this in your rack and buy modules. And like, you got guys coming in like, well, all right. So when you come in on Wednesday, what do you play through? Well, I, I play through a diesel. I got a diesel. Don't bring your amp. I got one and it's hooked in direct and it's, you know, it's perfect. Cool. Done. Uh, I play through a Vox. I got a Vox. I play through a Mesa. There's a couple Mesa modules out there. Um, Angle Savage. I mean, you have pretty much what most people play through. And it's real. It's legit tubes. And it's, you know, it's in your studio. So, I mean, studio engineers, if you're watching this, you really should consider this. It's a fantastic product. It's 100% legit. So, um, local, and see, well, I'm the other guy, the local guy who... Uh, you know, doesn't want to deal with hauling all that gear. Uh, now I have something simple to hook up. So, um, you know, for, for that. Now, here's the other thing. For guys that don't have a ton of money, but you want to try out amps that you, you know, dude, I'm not going to buy. I make pretty good money. I mean, I don't, I don't company. I do, I, I'm not bragging. I, just, I do okay for myself. I could go out and buy a Friedman B -E HBE or a diesel, but it doesn't make a lot of sense for me to do that because <laughs> I don't want to lug it around. And, um, I don't know. It just doesn't make a lot of sense for me anymore to, to buy a huge amp and cab and stuff like that. But see, I still want to try them and, and, and own the parts of them that I love and not miss out on it. Well, now I can, now I can try all that stuff out because it's three ninety nine, and I could buy any amp that I really want to try out. And it's not a big loss. It's 399 bucks. It's legit. You slide it in, you, you, you tweak it and it's yours, you know? So for guys that want to try all the different amps out there and because, you know, all of us are like thinking like, uh, man, it'd be nice to have a diesel. Well, you know, but ah, I ain't spending forty five hundred dollars on that. My amp's good. It, it works. Well, now you can, you know, you can do all that kind of stuff. Um, so that's the other person I think this is good for. I mean, it's good for anybody, but I'm just naming specifics so that maybe it'll strike a chord with some of the people out there that fall into those categories. Um, have you tried the actual fly rig pedal yet? Is there a pedal called the fly rig? Cause I, I wouldn't know. I, yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, Aaron, <laughs> um, okay. So Darren Moore, I work for rockstar on and off and they are seriously the best tribute band ever. I got hooked on them instantly and love working for them. Absolute must see. No, you're right. I've seen them twice, maybe three times, and they're incredible. Great band. Total pros all the way. Great time, but they do it professionally. And they wear all the outfits and the wigs and the makeup, and the, it's like it's incredible. I mean, you walk in there, and you really feel like, wow, well, am I 20? Like, you feel like you're 18 or 20 years old again. It's crazy. Um, <clears throat> okay, so... As for a rig, Jamie says, uh, I gladly use the Helix rack with the Sin 2 and Sin 5050. I run a six-base rack under 60 pounds, and you could push with one finger. Yeah, I mean, that would work perfect for you, dude. You know, if you went with that, I think it would sound incredible. You'd probably end up going with the Friedman, I'm pretty sure. Uh, I'm still blown away with how aggressive that Friedman is. I mean, it's sick. Um, so, hey, Michael. <laughs> My Canadian friend, what's happening? Um, hey, Jared, sorry for being late. Great setup, by the way. Oh, thank you, and and no need to apologize, man. I totally get it. I'm I'm just glad you're here. It's always good to see you, man. Um, I'll play a couple riffs for you uh, in case you missed anything in a second here. Johnny, Johnny Vegas, what's happening? This looks interesting. Yeah, dude. <laughs> I mean, you already have a Helix, so you have a controller for this. So now you can buy this and have the best of both worlds, Johnny. So you can get your tubes back, and I know you and Phil love your tubes, and Phil's got that Eggnator. There is an Eggnator for this. So he can have all that stuff and use your Helix to control it, best of both worlds. And you can have all that, and you're running direct. I got in-ears just like you do, man, and I'm using them right now, and it sounds freaking incredible. It sounds really fat, really full. There's no annoying frequencies and and Kevin's going to love you guys for it because you're not really uh, complicating his setup. He's still going to love how it sounds. And Kevin would love to have these in the studio too. Kevin runs one of the best studios in the area, the Sound Shop. He's a great engineer, 
really friendly guy, good to work with, um, and his mixes are to die for. They're incredible. Um, so you guys, you know, and, and Johnny's in uh, Elsie Binks, which is a really cool band um, in the area, and uh, they're they're going places, and they 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 put on an incredible show live too. So we played with them a couple times, and it's always an honor to share the stage with them. They're all great people and fantastic musicians. So, um, so let me catch up with some of these. Uh, Luis, when you buy the Sin Two, does bring does bring two modules. Um, it doesn't come with the modules. You have to buy them separately. Um, which yeah, that'd be awesome if you get a free module or something. But they're three ninety nine on top of the price of the of the chassis. Um, but I'm telling you, they're worth it. They're worth every penny because, once again, legit. They're legit. And you got a stereo effects loop. I mean, listen to how rich that That's the low gain sound on the on the uh, the Friedman BE HBE. That's the low gain. That's stupid. That's just freaking. That's what made me fall in love with this. I f I played that in the store and I was like, Oh my! Cr I gotta buy this. I don't even know what I just said. It was German or something, but <laughs> that was it. Was just so incredible. I couldn't say no. Um, I didn't even go in planning on buying anything that day. I was just going with Trevino. We were just hanging out, playing stuff, and screwing around with gear. And I walked out with all this crap. I mean, it <laughs> caught me by surprise. Um, okay, so so yeah, as far as the your question, Luis, uh, you you'd buy the you know the chassis and then whatever modules that you want separately, um, and you can mix and match anything you want. So like you can have a Friedman on this side, diesel on that side, two Friedmans. You know, they got the BE and the HBE. They got different ones. So um, I can have a, uh, a Mesa here and a, and a diesel there. Whatever. Whatever you want. You know, I mean, pretty soon I'm going to have the Engel Savage here and the diesel here and see what that's like, you know, and mix and match all that. So it's just freaking killer. Um, so the law, the Tech 21 fly rig. Oh, that's the pedal that Aaron's referring to. Yeah, um, I wouldn't mind trying one out. It might be pretty cool. Um, oh, Richie Kotzen uses it. Dude, that guy's an amazing guitar player. Yeah. Um, compared to playing Profiles, how do you feel about the synergy, Ari says? Ooh, good question, Ari. Um, I have to be very careful with this because I'm going to have friends throwing rocks at me. <laughs> um, okay, well, let me just be honest. Um, these are better. Um, and the reason why they're better is because, uh, even, even the Kemper, the Kemper is amazing. I mean, don't get me wrong. The Kemper is absolutely amazing. It's a great piece of gear and it feels good. It sounds good. You got all the, you, you guys know Kemper's legit as hell. Um, but there's, there's a reactive difference between this and anything digital. Now, I, I, I was talking to Trevino the other day, so I'll put it to you this way. You know how you play video games? And you have, like, uh, you, you know, like, let's just say it's, uh, you know, Special Ops. You know, the uh, that, that one game. I can't remember the freaking name of it right now. But it's the, the one, the World at War. All those, you go online and you fight each other and stuff. Well, they have an AI version of it, too. So you can just play the computer if you want. But here's the thing. When you're playing the AI version of that game, not the online version, but the game itself, the AI version, the guys that you're going against, they're always hiding in the same spots. And they're always like, you pretty much can expect, you know, uh, what to, you know, you know what to expect when you're playing it. Um, and you become a better pl game player by, by beating it and stuff. And there, you do reach a, a higher level. But that said, you go online and play it's a completely different thing because there's no ai now you're fighting real humans that are on the other end with their joysticks and they're freaking hiding in different spots and coming at you from different directions and different weapons and they have different strategies and you know you have to constantly adjust to what's going on around you and you now the level that you thought you were at was really good 
Now you have to level up even higher to achieve greatness there. So what I'm saying is when you're playing with a modeler, no matter how good it is, it's like the AI version of a game. Some modelers have better AI than others, okay, if we're getting the, the reference here. But when you go to something like this, there's things that tubes do that you don't expect. And you're going to catch on to that stuff and go, ooh, the sustain or the way the note kind of colors when I do things differently and do things, you're, you're going to play differently and you're going to pick up on that stuff. And that's another tool in your, in your tone box. So there's other things that you get to learn how to do that are unexpected because, again, we're not using AI anymore. This is real stuff. So they're going to do different things. And because they do different things, you're going to do different things. And it's more stuff that you get to add to your arsenal of licks, tricks, you know, whatever, you know, and that's what I'm learning from it right now. Cause I haven't played through tubes on a regular basis in eight years. So I've been way out of the loop with it. Um, and once again, I had good reasons for it. And if it wasn't for this product, I would never touch tubes again because I was perfectly happy with my Kemper and my Helix. I really was, you know, and the only time I changed the Kemper was when I noticed that the, the high gain tones were a little better. Um, and the reactiveness was a little better too. Uh, but I was perfectly happy with that. But when I played through this at Motor City Guitar, which was where I bought it, and I suggest if you live in Michigan or even close, go there. They're like the Andertons of, of the, the States. I mean, they're an amazing store with great people. But when I played this there, uh, I couldn't say no. It was unfreaking deniable what the difference was and what this does. So now I get to have a legit tube rig that I don't have to break my back and put, in, you know, special compartments in my truck for it. This sits on the front seat with me now, you know, and it's still just as easy to hook up as a, uh, a digital platform. So now I have something that's just as simple, just as light, just as compact, just as portable, but it's tubes, uh, you know, than, than I have with a, a, a modeling, you know, kind of rig. And I don't have to compromise anymore. So why would I say no to this? That's the only reason. This product right here is the only reason why I'm going back to tubes. The absolute only reason. If this didn't exist, I got a Kemper five feet away from me. I'd be playing that. And I'd be perfectly fine with it. And now I got two rigs. I got a digital rig and I got this. And this is going to keep me grounded. So, um, you know, I can compare, pla you know, uh, uh, profiles to it. But I found that with this, also, not only am I getting the different reaction out of it, um, and these are all subtleties, but they do, they're there, you know. Um, but I'm also getting the clarity. My playing's being better. I have to tighten up my riffs a little more because I'm getting clarity that I wasn't getting. And it's subtle, but it's there. It's stuff that you notice after playing for an hour, and then you switch back to something else, and you're like, oh my gosh, there's like this stuff that's happening in between the notes that is kind of like gluing them together but with this you're not getting that you know there's there's a, a tighter kind of response with this so your notes are more separated so you're noticing things more and the sustain i get on this is stupid it's so good uh you know so i can't complain you know um yeah you're welcome johnny i mean seriously i can't wait to share the stage with you guys again we've been kind of uh you know, off the grid for a little while because we've been revamping things and stuff. But I want to get back out there because I love you guys. I want to go out and do it again. Um, we were talking about adding a rack system with our stuff, Johnny says. Yeah, I'm telling you, you guys you guys can come over any time, you know, and, and do this uh, and check this out because I'm telling you, it's it's really good. And now you and Phil can have the best of both worlds. Um, you know, keep your Helix don't sell it because I sold mine and now I got to buy another one because <laughs> it'll control this perfectly. So make sure you keep your Helix. Um, it's it's definitely worth keeping. It's already paid for, so it's not like you got to add it to your expense list. It's it, so keep it. That's the number one advice I'd give you. <laughs> I don't mean to be pointing, but uh, keep your Helix because <laughs> it'll it'll come in uh, come in handy. 
your face when you plugged it in that Motor City guitar. Yeah, I mean, wasn't it crazy? I plugged in and you're looking at me, laughing at me because you saw like the little boy on Christmas morning look on my face. I mean, it was like incredible. Undeniable. Great stuff. I mean, it really is. Once again, no compromise. Fits anywhere. Very easy. And and Johnny, since, I mean, you guys got Kevin, uh, you know, freaking awesome guy to have around for what you guys do. Best sound guy. Freaking awesome sound guy. But he'll have this in your rack and have it all hooked up to your in-ears and all the routing and everything. And you guys are done. And it's really not going to make his life any harder. It's not. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be perfect for him. So, Michael, uh, my game... My game right now, Amplifier 6 paired together with HX Stomp and a pair of power cabs for now. But, sir, you have a lovely setup. Those oozes crushing tone. Yeah, thank you very much. And you got a killer setup, too. Let me go back to, uh, here's the diesel. Oh. <laughs> I mean, that's just, there's nothing bad you can say about that. It's not like, you know, you know some guy's rig's like, well, yeah, but it's this. and No, it's freaking perfect is what it is. It's gnarly. It's aggressive. You got plenty of uh, attack and tightness and the separation. And now here's, here's another thing. I'm going to turn the precision drive off. Now listen to this. So if that doesn't tell you this is legit, then I don't know what will, because it does have that kind of loose flubbiness that amps really have. Um, and it's there, but it's, it still sounds great. It just has a little more of a flub to it, but that's normal. So that's why you buy overdrive pedals. And it tightens it right up. And, it, and if you notice, it didn't change the tone. Same tone, very transparent. All it did was piss it off enough to make it do its job. And that's what I love about it so much. It's just, it's perfect, you know. So get this, get a precision drive, and Bob's your uncle. I mean, it's it's ridiculous. So, um, Ari, I switched from Helix to Kemper for that reactiveness. And you're right, it is more reactive, and it is better, with especially with high gains tones. I, high gain tones, it, it, it is. Um, uh, that I was missing from the Helix. I think I play better because of it. Uh, those subtleties matter definitely and make a difference. No, Ari, you're right. They do. And they make you a better player. Um, you know, I mean, they, once again, the Helix is fantastic. It really, really is. Um, when you're a high gain player, you notice the subtleties more. Uh, when you're a lower gain, a mid gain guy, it's almost like it doesn't really matter as much. Um, but uh, as soon as you kick in the gas and you really want more of that, that really aggressive high gain, that's when it starts, um, you start seeing the little bit of a lack there. Um, but the Kemper is definitely better, but then now this is next level. And once again, I hope I'm not being redundant, repetitive here. I, I have to be a little bit because people are coming and going. But now there's no compromise. So I have all the reactiveness and the tubes and all the... All the goodies, and I don't have to worry about all the, the, the big blocky stuff I got to carry around that's heavy and takes up a bunch of room and hard to set up, a troubleshoot, all that. This has ins and outs. It's got a great I.O. It's MIDI. It's stereo. It's got a stereo effects loop on the back. It's got, it'll hook into an amp that you have that already exists and add channels to that. Um, so you can have a Marshall that has a diesel channel in it. <laughs> Or an HPE channel or an Engel Savage. Wouldn't that be crazy? Like you're playing a Marshall, but you got Engel Savage tone because you have this hooked up through the effects loop of that amp, and now this is your tone for those channels. I mean, that's ridiculous. 
So they really thought of everything with this. And like I said, out of all the products that I've reviewed this year, I even have more to review. This is my favorite. Hands down, I don't care what comes down the pipe for me to review. This is my favorite. You know, guaranteed favorite. Um, so uh, definitely got to try it, Ari says, the Synergy. Yeah, Ari, tell you, I'm telling you, try it. Go to a store, hook it up to a pair of Freedman's or one Freedman cab. A good cab. Don't hook it up to a plastic one because you know how that is. It just it won't sound as good. Hook it into a good FRFR or use the power amp that it has, the SIN, uh, the SIN 5050, and hook it up to a good passive 4x12. And I'm telling you, you're going to be blown away. It's ridiculous good. Um, uh, so let's see. Michael says, sounds like a raging mad bulldog. That's what it is. I love it. Oh, it does. And that's the low gain channel on the, the VH4, which I have it at, you know, I have it kind of high, but it's not all the way up. Um, and then this is the high gain channel. <laughs> So articulate, you know. I mean, you can hear the pick slapping the strings. I mean, uh, sorry about the pop there. You can hear the pick slapping the strings. You can hear all that, and it's just incredible. And when you're on a stage and you got the in ears in, and you can hear everything so articulate, and it just sounds so fat and articulate in your ears. I mean, it's just. I mean, it makes you a better player when you're on stage and you're performing and you're enjoying what you're doing. I mean, are you going to perform better? Well, yeah, you are. You're going to have a great time, big old smile on your face, and you're going to be in your glory up there doing your thing. Here and, and you're reacting. You're, you're, you're having a, a reactive kind of relationship with this product while you're on stage or in the studio or at home practicing, and you're noticing things, and it's kind of like... It's so cool. Like I said, you're not playing a game with AI. You're playing real people. And stuff's coming at you, and you're responding to it and um, adjusting to it and utilizing those things um, as it comes at you. And, and now you're a different player because you're putting more tools in your arsenal every time you notice those things. Okay, so... What do we got here? Uh, let me catch up. Much appreciated. Might not be too soon because we're working on an album, but once we have time, some fun saved, I'd love to get your input. Um, uh, he's talking to Jamie there. Um, yeah, Johnny, anytime. I mean, you live like 20 minutes from me, so anytime you want to stop by, just, you know, call me. You can stop by. We'll get some food and some beers and freaking throw down on this, and you'll you'll freaking love it. Bring Phil I can even, now that I've, I'm done with my season of pressure washing, uh, i got more time on my hands. I can even probably come out uh, to uh, your studio, and, and we, can, we can have some fun out there with it, you know, and check it out. So we'll make something happen. Um, Luis, how is the precision drive set up? Uh, I have two, but sometimes I feel like it is too bright. I have the bright button all the way down sometimes. I have the OD808. Sometimes I prefer the OD. Uh, good question. My precision drive is, uh, it's, I have it kind of taped to it so it didn't move around. But um, I have the tight knob two notches up. Um, the volume's at 2 o'clock. Uh, the bright is at um, 9 o'clock. And the, the gain is, I always put it up just a notch, you know, just a little bit, just to, I don't know, I just want that security so that's that's really how i have it that's how i've always used it with other products too and um it it's it cuts nice but i mean is this too bright for you let me go to um one of the see to me that's perfect you know um it doesn't seem too bright at all to me. It's just really rich sounding. So I, I, I love it. I think it sounds great. Um, probably depends on your pickups, you know, your amp settings, all that kind of stuff, you know. I mean, uh, 
The amp settings I'm using right now, I mean, you can see them right here. The bass is up about noon. I cut the mids just a hair because I don't like scooping them too much. And then the treble's at like 1 o'clock. So, and it's still... <laughs> You know, I think it sounds great, you know, and I got in-ears, so, I mean, if it was, if there's any annoying frequencies, they're getting, like, forced into my head here, and I'm not wincing at all. It sounds incredible. Um, S. Theodore Brenner, how you doing, man? Thanks for stopping by. Let me read your comment. So what's the best way to get uh, clean tone and, and high-gain tones and be able to switch on the fly in a live setting? Great question. So for that, I would suggest buying the Sin 2, okay, and having, you know, depending on however you want them configured, but if it was me, I'd put my Dirty Tones here on the first one, and then I would have the Morgan, which is the Vox AC30 for my clean tones, and put them over there. I think the, there's a Friedman that has cleans in it too. So now you've got a, a dirty module and a clean module, and it comes with a foot, or it doesn't come with a foot switch, but you can buy the foot switch for 125 bucks. It's got five switches on it, and it operates via MIDI. So um, each foot switch it represents a channel. So each one of these has two channels. So you have a like a crunch gain and a lead gain. And then over here on your clean channel, if you had a cleaner one over here, you'd probably have like a clean and maybe like a, a low, really low gain kind of bluesy, riffy kind of channel. And you can set the volumes and EQs separately uh, for all of them. And you would just, if you want a clean channel, tap on the switch that's uh, associated with that, and you're done. So that's how you would do it. Great question. Um, yeah, I'm referring to the center G unit. Yep. Uh, sounds fat. Freaking awesome tone, Michael says. No, you're right. I mean, the diesel, I've always wanted to try a diesel. And, and son of a bitch, this diesel is incredible. It's just got that dark scary kind of i have a werewolf chasing me down a a, a smoky eye uh back eye ale, alley <laughs> i screwed that up um uh, but you know what i'm saying like something's creepy just coming out <laughs> In fact, I wrote that riff, um, the one I used for the intro for this, like when I was doing the promo. I wrote that because that tone from the BH4 inspired me. And that's how that came to life was... I just couldn't uh, couldn't resist writing something that was really chuggy and dark and like slower sounding, but very aggressive and lumbering, and it just had that feel to it. So I don't know about you guys, but I get inspired by like the tones that I play through, and it puts me in that mood and makes me write accordingly. So that inspired that. So that's how good the tone is in this is that it actually inspires me to write things and. Uh, I think that that's a really good uh, testament to how good this sounds. Um, so I'm referring, uh, see, thanks. Yeah, you're welcome, Luis. You're, yeah, I mean, uh, I would definitely uh, use those settings, and then um, I think that that would work. And if it's, uh, you know, I would keep the tone down a little because if you remember with the, with the uh, Horizon Devices Precision Drive, there's twice the headroom in a lot of those um, uh, settings on that. So, like, where they are at 50, other pedals are at 100%. So that's why um, Misha made it that way. So now, like, your drive on it, if you turn it all the way up, that's, that's like, twice as much as what um, a Scream 808 would give you. Um, same thing with the tone and same thing with the volume. So their volume setting at 50 is where the Scream 808 is at 100% up. 
So keep that in mind when you're turning the knobs because they left all that headroom in there on purpose so that if you wanted to get freaking crazy with it, you could, depending on what kind of amp you had it hooked up to. So let me see what else we got here. Brian Miller asks, is the HX stomp just hooked up through the effects loop on the SIN 2? Yes. Yes, it is. Um, so, yeah, all I have is, like, I just made a couple quick settings on it. So I got a, a phaser. <laughs> So I got that with a little bit of verb on it, and um, and then here's like the regular, just plain, simple kind of setup. Uh, you know, no no effects, and then uh, here's chorus. <laughs> Obviously the the you know the lead channel with um, uh, some delay and, and reverb. These are all just quicky little things I dialed in. You know, just simple. You know, just simple stuff just to kind of show. Uh, you know what you can do so you can run the stereo or mono right now it's mono because I only had one in input on my board here when I go live so uh, that I got to upgrade that so I can demo stereo stuff but it still sounds incredible so like this is like I said if you have a more of a simple setup where you uses you know you don't need a ton of routing and stuff like that and and all that this this is a fly rig right here this will fit in an overhead and you're done fit in the front seat of your car in your overhead um, you, you go to any gig and, you know, you see all your friends like hooking up like all these amps and cabs and refrigerator setups and everything. And like, you're just sitting there going, I got the same exact tone you got. Mine's legit tubes too, but it's right here. You know, I'm not dragging a bunch of crap in here. When I get home at three in the morning, I take this out of my car, one trip, put it on the couch, go night night, you know, <laughs> and I don't have a big mess to clean up the next morning. So that's freaking killer. Like I said, no compromise. Once again, if you want to try a diesel and you don't have $4,500, $399, you got a diesel. And it's legit diesel. Made by Peter Diesel. You know? So, and you can feel good about it because you're supporting a company that makes amps that you want to keep in business. Um, and there you go. You're supporting a great company that makes killer stuff. Um, so let me see. God, that that bite sounds exactly like it's the VH4. No, you're right. It's just it's freaking ridiculous. So again, here's the VH4, uh, the lower gain, like the crunch channel. <laughs> I'm not playing fancy riffs here. This isn't really a fancy riff demonstration. This is, you know, and you guys all know, I mean, as guitar players, when we go into a store and try out an amp, we're not doing anything fancy. We're just doing all the chuggy, like the tester riffs, you know, the. Okay, it passes the chug test. What about the pitch squeal, you know? You know, all the annoying crap that we do to try out amps, but that's what we do. You know, I mean, we're not in there to show off. We're we're in there to make this thing show off. And so far, the sustain in this thing is, like, stupid. It's, like, so... I mean, if you guys watched the intro, I, I made up, like, a little promo video. It's on my YouTube channel, and I shared it on Facebook in several groups. If you watch that, that's all legit, like, like sustain and all that stuff. It's all there. And I just couldn't believe... And one part, you can see me, I'm like almost falling out of my chair going, holy crap, this is just incredible. I mean, I'm just enjoying everything I'm hearing 
uh, while I'm playing those solos because it was just so inspiring, you know, and I just, it was like a kid in a candy store, you know, playing all those riffs. So it was cool, you know. Um, Michael says, uh, gear needs to be inspiring. And you're right. I agree. It shouldn't be just a tool that you use um, to get through excuse me, to get through the job. It should be something that gets you through the job but inspires you as well. So if you're playing uh, gear that is a good tool and it gets you through something, but it doesn't really, it's kind of flat on the inspiration level, you need to go shopping. You really do. You need to go shopping because there's a lot of great gear out there that is uh, productive um, and and does a job. But you don't want something. I think uh, one of the guys in my Kemper group, Gregors, uh, I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. He makes profiles for Kemper. He said, you know, you know, certain products do a job, but tubes like, you know, like an actual t- good tube amp uh, will inspire you, you know, and, and, it, and it just it just rocks, you know. And for all of my friends out there that know I'm a, I'm a modeler guy and I've been for a long time and I've actually showed them um and uh modeling and they've i've shown them you know shine the light on these things for them um is i i, I want to be clear and and i don't want people to think like oh i tricked everybody and it, it's not that this wasn't out you know if this was out then i would have sold all my gear and bought this and never strayed from tubes but i had to because the modeling is is killer don't get me wrong it's freaking killer you know the modeling the profiles all that stuff is amazing and I'm just going to keep my Kemper because I love it. It's an amazing piece of gear. But uh, I just got, I, I had to switch because of my situation with 10 minute load on, 10 minute load off, and a 45 minute set. I mean, you can't do that with the gear that I had. I had a Mesa Dual Rec Roadster, a 4x12 cab, two pedal boards, and a Patchmate Loop 8 uh, switching system. I'm sorry, but that ain't going to work for a 10 minute setup. It's just not. And I had an acoustic guitar, a 12-string, before I bought these with piezos in them. That's what I had. So, I mean, it was impossible for me to do those kinds of blow-and-go setups. So I had to switch. And that started me on that whole journey with digital platforms. And I'm glad I took that journey because I learned a lot and I played a lot of killer gear. But this, this is calling me home. And for you guys out there that are playing modelers and you do love them, um, Do yourself a favor and check this out. Just stop by for dinner. You just might stay. You know, you just might freaking stay and say, you got a room upstairs? You know, I I might want to live here for a while. So um, just check it out, you know, because once again, now it's easy. Now it's no compromise and it's easy. You know, it's not a big luggy, you know, refrigerator you got to fit in your truck every time you go out and play. It's very portable. Um, and it's legit stuff. So Brian says, that sounds insane. The more gear, the better. Yeah, you're right. And thank you. It does sound insane. It's just, it's just a really badass piece of gear, you know, and it takes, now here's the other thing. I didn't even cover this. I'll just say this really quick and we'll wrap up, but it takes effects really well. All the effects that the HX stomp has right now that I'm plugging through it. I mean, listen to that. I just, I didn't even dial this this uh, gray flanger in. I just, you know, I just turned it on. Yeah, it's a gray flanger. I didn't change anything. I just uh, selected it. I mean, it takes effects really well. So, I mean, so the, even the effects loop's good on it. And what you're hearing is the cab sim that's inside of this, too. It's a legit cab sim. So I can't say enough good things about it. It's, it's really something that I would suggest uh, at least trying out. And I'm telling you, like, like I said, I've been a modeler guy for years and years and years and loved you know all the gear i had and and played through um loved it all still think it's great stuff but once again i had to do it 
now I don't have to use a modeler anymore because I got this and it's portable and it fits and it's freaking amazing. Um, and I'm still going to be a big proponent for modelers. I think they're awesome and they have a great place in uh, what we do and they offer a lot of great options for us. And I'm going back to Helix because it's going to be a great switching system for this. Uh, it's all MIDI. So now I can have uh, one patch on the Helix that has all the effects that I want. I turn them on and off at will. And then I hit a snapshot. And then this will be bypassed. And then I got piezo or an amp block that has clean tone in it that I can use for my clean sounds. And I hit another snapshot and I'm back to this. And it switches this switches the channels on this appropriate to what snapshot that I use. So all those commands it'll do very easily. I just need to set up one template for it and it'll be done. You know, and that won't be hard to do because I'm very familiar with the product and it's easy to use. So uh, yeah, so I mean that's that's what I'm gonna do. Brian says thanks for all the info. Great show. No, thank you, man. I mean, seriously, uh, Brian, thank you. Uh, this and, and you're welcome. This is what I do. I love doing this. I started this almost a year ago, and um, I, I wanted to bring uh, shine light on gear that people um, didn't know about or maybe knew about or were afraid to try it. Um, and I actually have local events where people can come and plug into this stuff because you know how it is. You go to a store and I've seen it a thousand times, you know, you go to a, let's, I'm not naming names here, but you go into a store and they got a Helix there and it's plugged into some crappy, you know, like beat up amp sitting on the floor and it's not even supposed to be plugged into this thing. It's just, well, here's your crappy amp to listen to the Helix on. It's like, dude, no one's going to buy a Helix based on what they're hearing there. It's such a bad experience. Um, how are they going to sell the product? If I worked for Line 6 or even some of these other companies and walked into some of these stores and saw how they had my stuff displayed, I would call and say, Back a truck up to the warehouse right now. We're taking everything out of here. You guys aren't you guys aren't even qualified to sell our stuff anymore. And I'm not just talking line six. I'm talking anybody that they have their stuff inappropriately set up there. I would be so pissed as a rep. I would be. I would pull everything out of there. I used to do retail. I know how that stuff works, and I've seen it happen. Um, and they need to start like all these guys. They need to start going out to these stores and like checking to make sure that stuff's set up right because. There's a lot of people that are afraid to buy gear uh, because um, they try it out and it's not set up properly and they have a horrible experience with it and they walk out of there going, gosh, what a piece of junk. I'm glad I didn't buy that. Well, what I try to do is do demonstrations like this where I'm, I'm plugged in direct so you're not some hearing some room mic where it's like, well, how do you really tell what this sounds like? If you got this on your TV or if you're using earbuds like I, I have I got in-ears, but if you're using earbuds, you hear a direct sound not just your phone speaker. I mean, you're going to hear like a pretty legit version of what's going on here. And then when I go live, like when I do live in person, like when I go on location, do demonstrations, I mean, the stuff is set up appropriately. I mean, I got the Friedman cabs. I have things set up the way they're supposed to be. So when I demo it, people hear like, Wow, and I heard, and I've had people say that when I heard it at the store, it didn't sound like that. I'm like, well, yeah, they didn't have it set up right. That's why. And then I, they can come up and try it out and ask questions. And most of the time when after that, they leave going, I'm going to buy one of those. That that was legit. That freaking thing kicked ass, and I, I want one. So it's more convincing when you try it out in the appropriate setup. Um, and that's what I try to do. And I'm actually going to start taking this on the road and calling stores and setting up uh, events. I actually had one store already reach out to me, Motor City Guitar. They want me to do an event there and um, demo a bunch of stuff. And, and, you know, and it'll be fun. It'll be great for everybody. And I can't wait to talk to Marty about that and get that going because I really think that um, it'll be a better way for people to, to hook up to stuff. And here, perfect, perfect example. I'll say this before I wrap up. I would not have bought this if they had it set up inappropriately. They had this hooked to a Friedman ASC 12. So I walked in, plugged into it, and it blew my freaking head off. It sounded amazing. And I bought one, you know? So right there, perfect example. If they had hooked up to some crappy little plastic speaker in the corner, I wouldn't have bought it because it wouldn't have been it wouldn't have been a good experience for me. But then again, 
not pat myself on the back. I say this with all humility. I'm experienced enough to know to go, what other cab do you have? I want to try this out in a, in a better cab. But not everybody has the time or the wherewithal to ask about that. They just assume that, well, this is what it is. And they just kind of go with it and don't ask any questions. They plug into it, spend five minutes with it, and go, nah, piece of crap, I'm not buying that. You know, I mean, I, I try to ask questions, but that's that's what I like about Motor City is the guys there know how to hook stuff up properly and demo it properly and display it properly. So when you go in there and try out stuff, most of the time it's going to be a legit setup and you're going to be very convinced on whatever that product has to offer. You're going to know right away. So, well, uh, I'm going to wrap up here. Um, uh, but if you haven't subscribed, please do. I really appreciate all of my subscribers and I have a lot of stuff coming up. I'm going to try to go live every Sunday night so that we can do like, um, uh, a topic every week where I, I just pick a, a cool topic, whether it's a vlog, a demo, um, whatever, and we can have a really good open discussion about that. And I'm here for you. So if you have any ideas about things, um, I'll be happy to, to cover those topics for you and do some research so that we can come up and have an educated uh, conversation about this stuff. And I love back and forth. I even love it when people might not agree with me and they have something um, – that they, they have to say and um, they want to uh, interject their opinion on it because I appreciate that stuff too because I'm here to learn too. You know, so if there's uh, people that can enlighten me, I'm here for that too. You know, I don't know everything. I'm just here to present what I do know um, and learn from you just as much as you hopefully are learning from me. So again, I, um, I don't have a show without you guys and I appreciate you all very much. And I will always do my best to give you good content, good topics, good gear, good discussion, good demos. I'll do my best to work on that for you guys, especially now that my pressure washing season has come to a, a nice slowdown where I can comfortably work on the show more. So, um, I'll wrap up with this. Thank you so much. It means the world to me when I see comments and when I see people here, uh, familiar people and people, new people. I appreciate all of you very much. Um, uh, and thank you. It really means the world to me. And if you haven't tried one of these out, please do. They're good for anybody for any situation. Now you don't have to lug heavy stuff around to enjoy tubes anymore. So try them out. Musicians, Bedroom players, living room players, stages, studio musicians, studio engineers, um, try this. It's a great product. Um, my favorite of the year, guaranteed. Um, thanks again for watching, and I will definitely see you soon for more uh, reviews. I'm going to be rev reviewing the uh, Friedman ASC-10 very soon, and some picks. Uh, I got some picks coming from Windspear, um, Dragonheart picks. The V picks and a couple other companies. Oh, uh, these guys too. Um, forgot what these are called. Uh, chicken picks. So yeah, I'll be doing a shootout with all those very soon. All right, I love you all. Thank you very much for stopping by. I appreciate it. Um, you guys all take care, and I will see you soon. <laughs>